Welcome to Inspiring Lives with Dr. Shelley. I'm your host, Dr. Shelley Hipsky. All of our guests have conquered obstacles, risen above adversity, and have gone on to help others. Today's show is about becoming great regardless of any adversity we face along the way. Our first guest is a real dynamo. Her colleagues call her Dr. Biz because she's earned both an MD and an MBA. She's been a firefighter, an entrepreneur, a medical doctor, a chief medical officer, and a working mom. The only thing I think she doesn't do is sleep. So please welcome Dr. Summer Knight. Thank you so much for coming from Philly. Thank you, Shelley. <laughs> I appreciate you having me. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So just a little background for our audience. We met, tell, tell us where, where we met. Right, well I was actually giving a speech around heroism uh, to amazing women entrepreneurs with the um, Women uh, Small Business Association. Correct, correct. It was a lot of fun, amazing energy in that room with Absolutely. women just picking it up and cooking it and making things happen in their lives. It's I incredible. agree. I was, I was glad to be there. I was nominated for the Community Service you Award were. then. So, <laughs> and then I saw your story when you got up and spoke oh. and I was like, Th this I want on my show. So I'm really you. glad you're able to join us today. Um, your life right now looks pretty perfect. I mean, if, if a woman looks at it, they think, wow, you're doing all these things, and she's got the kids, and she's juggling it all. But it wasn't always that way. Can you take us back to your childhood, please? Sure, and I, say, I talk about this in the two stories, and mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that was very compelling, right? And yes, it's a absolutely. unique way, way of telling it. And I start out by sharing the story of, of a little girl. Mm -hmm. And this little girl is born to teenage parents and there's chaos in her life and there's danger and drama and the stress level is so high for this little girl that she develops this debilitating even life-threatening disease that starts to att her own body is attacking her it attacks her eyes it attacks her heart it attacks her joints and the doctors finally tell her mother that she may actually die from how serious the war is going on in her body mm. And um, and so and then we talk about how she is helped actually by some nurses and social workers to really identify the stress that was in her life um, that was causing this horrible disease to just take over, mm. and then how her life starts to get better and then her mother dies. Oh, you know, let's stop right there. Um, I'd like to take us to a clip of you experiencing the, the death of your mother. So if we can just... Oh, my mother was a huge part of my life. And growing up, she was my champion. She was my superwoman. Uh, she was my everything. And um, I always tried to do the best I could so that she would be proud of me. And um, when she died, it just rocked my world. completely alone. I didn't want to tell anyone because I didn't want them to pity me. My mother's death had a huge impact on me and a huge reason for me becoming a physician. Wow. Talk <laughs> about like mentorship and, and the right. love, mother's love. I right. That definitely shows through there. Yeah. Um, so you said that it, it compelled you to want to be a medical doctor. Can you talk right. a little more about that? Why? Yeah, the experience, you know, when we talk about health care, mm -hmm. um, there's two components there, right? It's being healthy and it's care, yeah. so compassion. And my mother's death um, could have been averted if, uh, if the health care professionals had followed protocol. Mm -hmm. She may still be with us today. And so, and then the, the other very close thing that happened was the way our family was told about her death. So we were, they would bring you into a special waiting room, and at the time I didn't realize it was the waiting room, you know, where bad news is, is transferred. And when the doctor came in and told us about the death of my mother, I was a teenager at the time, my younger siblings were in grade school at the time, and, um, and they just flopped the news on the table with no compassion and turned on their heels and walked out. Mm. And then, the, and every moment, of that, I can 
I can step right back into. I remember the sounds, the guttural screams, and I don't know who those screams came from, but the screams that came up from my body, from my father's body, from my siblings' bodies, I will never forget them. It gives me goosebumps right now just thinking about it. Yeah. And I remember the smells in the hospital. I remember the sounds of people's heels hitting the ground and of the gurneys being rolled back and forth. And just the huge emptiness of all of that. And just having some compassion, so the care in healthcare uh, would have made that transition of, uh, of my mother's dying so less of a burden, just a hand, uh, 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 a question of what is it that you, knew you need from us right now? Right. And that could have just taken a minute, three minutes, five minutes out of those healthcare professionals' moments, and it would have made the difference for, particularly for me and my, and my younger siblings and my father as well, um, and helped us to begin on the healing process. And there are amazing healthcare people out there today. And as I matured, I realized that I wanted to help and support them from a compassion perspective, mm -hmm. and that's why I chose the path of being a physician. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, and you've even run a hospital, correct? Yeah, um, what, what I learned uh, from, ex from my experiences, so I developed my own practice, and then went on and helped, um, helped develop an urgent care in an area that didn't have a hospital any longer, mm -hmm. and then was asked by another group if I would come and help them to establish rural hospitals because the rural hospitals in the area of the country I was living with, they weren't uh, well supported. Mm -hmm. um, they were very much needed, but they didn't even have, they weren't even able to buy the supplies that they needed to help people. Mm -hmm. And so I got involved in a group that was trying to make a transition and really, f you know, developing a com company with a social conscious right. of going out there and taking over these hospitals and trying to bring, you know, appropriate protocol medicine to them. And so I was helping to run those uh, three of the hospitals that they had started out. Oh, well, that's amazing. Um, you, you sort of briefly touched on your childhood and about right. um, what happened there. And we don't have long before break. But could you just elaborate a little more on what you went through in your childhood? Sure. I think that the best way to share with it, without getting into the brass tacks, mm -hmm. is that all of us experience um, wonderful things in our childhood and wonderment as well as really tough times. Yeah. And to explain it, I would just say that I, um, I didn't live the worst life, definitely, and probably not the best. And so there was chaos, there was abuse, there was difficulty that was highly stressful. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what helped, though, was the ability to, uh, as I grew, is to have that constant conversation. For me, it was with a higher power. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I would ask the questions, why? And I kept getting the message that, why not? And because you're going to use this as a springboard. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Well, Dr. Summer Knight has worn many hats over the years, from being a firefighter to a medical doctor to running a hospital. When, we'll come, when we come back, we're going to find out how she managed to balance everything. I think a lot of the, the women in the audience are wondering just that, that tip that we're looking for. Um, and she has some tips that are going to help us figure out how we can reach our own personal greatest potential. So please stay with us. My name is Jamila Corbett. I'm a successful 27-year-old entrepreneur from Washington, D.C. I'm an independent thinker, a visionary, and a creative alchemist. But I didn't get this way all by myself. One of the people who inspired me the most was my father. My father always encouraged me to follow my passion and to be the creator of my own opportunities. He instilled in my siblings and me a fearless mentality. Whenever I share my ideas with him, at the end of the conversation, he will always say, go forth and conquer. I started my first business at the age of 10. My father has my news clippings, accomplishments, and old homemade gifts on a section of the wall in his basement office. He has been one of my biggest supporters throughout my entire life, and for that I am grateful. I could not have gotten this far without the encouragement and wisdom from my father. I live to inspire others like he has inspired me. Thank you, Dad. 
Remember, we want to know what's inspiring you, so be sure to go to inspiringlivesinternational.com and tell us your story. We've been talking with, I think, one of America's busiest women. Not only does she wear multiple hats in the business world, but she devotes countless hours to helping others. But how does she find the time? How does she find the energy and the motivation? Please welcome back our favorite doctor of the day, Dr. Summer Knight. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Shelley. <laughs> Absolutely. So what I've been so impressed with you is that you wear so many hats. So I had to go to my son's toy box, and I had to get... <laughs> Yes, because you're you're one of our favorite firefighters. Thank you. Do I get to wear it? Yes. Pop it on there. Yeah. You can do that. Well. Awesome. Okay. You are also a medical doctor. Yes, I am. So you yes, get I all am. these little props. I love it. Love it. Oh, there you go. We have a wonderful book out on the market here. Yes. So this is 35 winning strategies for leading entrepreneurs. There and so you go. You go into that angle yeah. as well. So because of all that. Boy, what else do you have we, in there? Well, we have the Woo! super mom cake. <laughs> <laughs> because you are our favorite oh, super mom. Oh, that's wonderful. Do so I get to put this on sure, too? All right. Got it all going on there, girl. I, I love it. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can give them all back. I'll pop them I back don't get away. to keep these? Oh, uh, whatever you want from it, sweetheart. <laughs> Oh no, the super cape is the Superman uh, cape, superwoman <laughs> cape, super mommy <laughs> cape. I love it. So yes, I had to do that because I just I'm blown away. I'm blown <laughs> away by how you do it all. So uh, take us back to the firefighter stuff because yeah. that the g when you spoke to that audience of women, we were all like, she did what? She went into the fire and right. tell us about that. What was your most powerful experience going into a fire? Well, I think what uh, really kind of made me realize about heroism were two main events. One was the first time. So mm -hmm. the first time the fire tone went out and I thought I'd jump up and be excited, which mm -hmm. I was, but I also jumped up and my stomach fell into my feet. Have you ever mm -hmm. had that feeling? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, oh. You're like, oh geez, this is. And, um, you know, and I wanted to kind of retch my guts out, but I knew I had to head out <laughs> and yes, do something yes, else. Absolutely. So, um, I realized at that moment there was three things I had to do to become a hero, and here it was. It was I had to put my big girl panties on, <laughs> I needed to suit <laughs> up, and I needed to go step up to the fire. Awesome. And that became my mantra. And this is a time where women were not um, ubiquitous in the fire service yes. and the paramedic service. And so I really had to keep a lot of those, um, those fears to myself and really make it happen. Absolutely. So yeah. even when there's fear brewing inside of you, you still have right. to step out there and, and make it happen and sometimes go directly into right. the fire like you did. Exactly. So that's, exactly. That's just amazing. I'm sure people out there are going, wow, she did that for real. <laughs> And I love also how you explain the meaning of life. I mean, that's been one of these, like, questions that's been around the globe for many, many, many years. Um, and so if we could just take a peek at you speaking. Oh, because thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> let, let's cut the clip of you speaking about the meaning of life. The power of an individual is when you choose, when you choose the meaning of your life. It's just that simple. Test it for yourself. Take the risk. What is the meaning of life? It's whatever you choose it to be. So now, choose your meaning. Live your life. That's awesome. I love it. You're going out there, <laughs> you're getting people pumped up about living their life, and. And there's this whole Innovate to Great movement you've got going on. Can you right. talk about that? Yeah, so Innovate to Great is all about you know, choosing your life. Yeah. And it's really focused at companies as well as individuals. Because it, it really takes individuals to really make amazing organizations mm -hmm. and to really become innovative. And so one of the things that I realized that we really needed to speak about when we wanted particularly U.S. companies mm -hmm. to start innovating so, you know, as we're, as we're, as we're pulling ourselves into this new economic um, boom, so I'm being really positive, yes, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> is that we really needed to enable people to be able to take risks. Yeah. So I decided what is the biggest issue that gets in the way between taking a risk and being innovative within a company or being an entrepreneur taking a risk outside of the company? Mm -hmm. And I reali realized that we needed to talk about the fear of failure. Yeah. 
So it's okay. not failure that holds people back. It's actually the fear of failure. Mm -hmm. And I think when people realize that failure is so important to success, it's a rite of passage. And when people are afraid to actually, are afraid of failure, they shut down and they don't allow their true heroism to come out. Uh -huh. And so I really talk to them about showing up, bringing all their gifts to the table, being as creative as possible, and being a hero in their own right. And it's just a really powerful message and able to bring that from being the firefighter, from being a physician, and being a businesswoman. Awesome. So yeah. we have 30 seconds. What's your top tip for moms to balance their life? Oh, okay. So <laughs> that would be <laughs> a strategic life plan. Um, I know it's a big word, but strategic <laughs> life plan. Okay. It's kind of the way corporations um, plan and do strategy. And so I thought uh, when I was looking at, um, at, at, at the way companies were able to execute and then hearing people say, well, how do you do it? How do you yeah. make the next step? And I realized that what I was doing was building a strategic life plan for myself. And it's one of the things that I help teach people how to do. And, and they can get done in months to years what they thought they would never accomplish in a lifetime when they adhere to a strategic life plan. Awesome. I love it. Strategic life plan. Yes. That's, that's a fantastic way to look <laughs> at it. And when I said we had 30 seconds, I didn't mean we had 30 seconds for the show because I, I booked you for the whole show because <laughs> I typically have an expert, but here you are. You're an expert in so many things. I needed you for the whole show. So. Awesome. Up next, Jennifer Hain joins us with this week's Gratitude Giving segment, and then Dr. Knight returns with her prescription for empowering individuals to be their very best. Don't you dare go away. I'm Jennifer Hain, bringing you another Gratitude Giving. Today I am here with Dr. Shelley Hipsky, and we have Alice here. And today's organization that we're featuring is called Mommy Makeover, otherwise known as Makeover for a Cause. Shelley is actually in the process of having her makeover, and Alice just had a Mommy Makeover. Um, Ola Hawadame is the founder of this organization, and she has done a phenomenal job. Alice, why don't you tell us the importance of having a makeover as a mother of seven, ages 23 to four years old? Well, I think it's really important to take care of ourselves inside and out because if we're not whole, then we can't be whole and present for our kids. Absolutely, that's really beautiful. And are you enjoying your makeover? Here we have a video of Dusty King, who was a client of Ola's. And Ola, going in with Mommy Makeover, has just done amazing, thing, amazing things in Dusty's life. Let's go ahead and take a look. Dusty is a client of ours from Our Lady's Inn. She is getting married May 31st. We've come into her life last month and helping her put together her wedding. How has Makeover for a Cause impacted your life? Makeover for Cause has um, definitely helped bring my family together, helped me plan my wedding. They've uh, helped me get my dress and my hair done and uh, uh, shoes for the wedding and things that I couldn't otherwise afford. They've helped me lower my stress by not having to worry about um, where everything was coming from money-wise. Um, and they just had a huge impact on um, on helping me uh, boost my self-esteem, help me lose weight, and um, help me feel better about myself and um, what I'm doing with the goals that I have in my life. When we're not done, after the wedding is done, I want you to know we're going to be like your second family. So whenever you need anything, you always call us. Um, if there was a message for anyone out there that's kind of like in the same shoes as you, what would you give them? I would say that the best thing to do is um, to let go of some things and to start moving forward in your life and stop looking back. Um, so often we live in the past and not the present. So that would be my advice to them is to just move forward and um, to never let go of goals that you set for yourself, but be realistic about them. I have been through a lot of different things, um, a lot of different crises with drug addiction, with um, 
with rape and molestation. Um, I have been through a lot of um, just emotional abuse in my life and um, and trying to put my life back together has been really hard, but it's had me and um, Makeover for a Cause has helped that happen. I have to tell you something, Darcy. I really do look up to you. I mean, I commend you. You're 21 years old. You have three beautiful kids. Um, you know, you're on the right track. You've been clean for 11 months. Um, and I really do see you as being a role model for others. Dr. Shelley Hipsky's latest book, Ordinary People, Extraordinary Planet, is inspiring lives around the world. Find your copy at major bookstores and on Amazon.com. And welcome back to Inspiring Lives with Dr. Shelley. We've been talking today with a medical doctor, an entrepreneur, and a supermom, yet there's only one person on the couch. She's here to tell us that we can all be heroes and help others along the way. Welcome back, Dr. Summer Knight. Thank you, Dr. Shelley. Absolutely. I'm so glad to have you here. You're a friend and, and somebody I really respect, so thank you oh, for being here. Thank you. And one <laughs> of the things that really um, gets my heart is when people go out there and they do either philanthropic or charity work, you know, that that's really where my heart is and my mission, and I saw that in you as well. Can you speak a little to the, the volunteering and the giving back that you do? Absolutely. Well, we're kindred spirits, and we as well as probably everyone in your audience, yes. and so um, all my mentors. And so for me, it started out with uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Awesome. And um, I thought as a young person in my early 20s, I'd go and, you know, help one child and, and that, you know, we would have our moments. Yeah. And what I realized from that experience is that actually it had a greater impact on my life than I could have ever, ever expected. So giving is an amazing way to receive in ways that we never, ever expect. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you seem so busy. Like, I can't even express to my audience how busy you are. Because of that, how do you make time? Like, people are always like, how do you make time? How do you find, no, how do you find time is what they always say to me. And I always say, <laughs> right. you have to make it. So how do you do it? How do you make time? Well, I alluded a little earlier about a strategic life plan. Mm -hmm. And what that does is that allows me to make uh, choices mm -hmm. about where, what I want to accomplish in life. And so there's some of the key choices for me has been to be uh, the best mom I can be. Yeah. Now that's not a per perfect mom. That is the best mom I can be. Um, and then also as a professional, how can I give to the world? Because we can make a choice. We can either sit on the couch, not so much like we're doing, <laughs> but, but or we can, um, we can choose not to add positively to the world or we can choose to really add positively to the world. And so that's very important to me and it's part of my strategic life and that's yeah. how I make my choices and prioritize what I get involved with. And I know that you have something brewing, the, the one human race. Can you speak to that? Oh, thanks for asking me about absolutely, that. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so that is uh, my big way of giving back. And it's really my conversation with the world um, and helping young people. So we have all these globals, these young people who are traveling, who are experiencing the world in their own ways, whether they're doing it for a first time or whether they're doing it with education or just getting to know themselves or just other cultures. And so one of the things I wanted to help give them was a language where they could connect globally with other young people uh, called One Human Race. And it's a way that we can all communicate to each other that we're all part of one human family yeah. and how we can see how we're similar rather than what so many other folks would like us to do, which is to figure out how we're so different and mm. how we should be yeah. polarized. It's how can we bring us ourselves together and, become, and come under one big tent? Yes, absolutely. So my last question, you're, you're a mother of five. What are the most important life lesson in a nutshell? What you want to tell your children? I would, I, I don't want to tell my children. I'd prefer to walk my talk. Yes. And, um, and so those would be to t 
absolutely step into my own heroism. And I focus on that every moment of every day. So, you know, every time I make a choice, it's am I making the choice to really step up, to really show off my gifts? Yeah. Um, so that would be the biggest one. And the other one would be um, is how to connect. Mm -hmm. And for me, the connection point is by having this global conversation. Yeah. And so those are the two ways that I hope that I'm showing my family and all my extended family, my big tent of friends just like you mm -hmm. and everyone else in your audience, just you know, how can we all be connected? I love it. I thank love you. the connection and I love our connection <laughs> and, and you connecting with my audience like this. So thank you so much to our very special guest today, Dr. Summer Knight. She demonstrates by example that we can all innovate to become great. Despite Dr. Knight's numerous professional responsibilities, she makes time to put that cape on and fly to the next PTA meeting or the kids' sporting event. And that's inspiring. Until next time, I'm Dr. Shelley Hipsky. And remember, inspiration is just a story away. We look for you in every face.